Hey guys, my name is Dr. Sam. A few of you have been reminding me to keep my promise and make a video about tinnitus. Now this is a big topic, so today I want to give you a broader overview specifically on the causes and treatments for tinnitus in terms of the latest research. Also, I'm fully aware that my accent is hard to understand, so apologies in advance for my pronunciation of the word ear. I'm going to make it into a little game for you to pass the time. What is tinnitus? Tinnitus is when you can hear phantom sounds inside the ears or head when there is no external source of the sound. It's very common, affecting about 12 to 30% of adults at some point, and it happens more often as we age. What are the symptoms of tinnitus? Tinnitus can be either constant or come and go and can vary in loudness, be in one ear or both. It may sound like ringing, buzzing, whistling, roaring, humming, or sound like your heartbeat. Because you can't turn it off or move away from it, it can be extremely annoying. It also tends to be more obvious in quiet places, like when you are trying to go to sleep. What causes tinnitus? Remember that tinnitus is a symptom rather than a disease, and there are lots of reasons why people get tinnitus. So in the first instance, I would recommend that you see your doctor for a proper assessment. In general, there are seven big culprits. Firstly, ear issues, which can lead to tinnitus, such as noise-induced hearing loss, age-related hearing loss, impacted wax, ear infections, or many ears disease, which is a combination of dizziness, hearing loss, and tinnitus. Brain causes, which are actually quite uncommon. This includes head injuries, multiple sclerosis, or something which is very rare, a brain tumor called acoustic neuroma. Infections like meningitis or syphilis can potentially lead to tinnitus. Medications, this is a very important cause. Lots of drugs are ototoxic, which literally means toxic to the ear. Tinnitus is often the first sign of ototoxicity. The negative effects of ototoxins on our ears can be reversible and temporary or irreversible and permanent. I'll list the medications in the description for you, but drugs like diuretics, certain antibiotics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and chemotherapy agents can all potentially harm our ears. Jaw problems. The main one is TMJ dysfunction or temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Vascular causes. If your tinnitus sounds like a pulse or your heart beat, then the sound may be due to movement of blood from a narrowing in the carotid artery, for example. It's particularly important to see your doctor promptly if you experience this type of tinnitus. Unknown. Lots of cases of tinnitus have no identifiable cause, although I'll address this soon in the treatments part of the video. But what is happening at the nuts and bolts level? When sound waves reach our ears, they travel into the middle and inner ear where there are these things called hair cells. Hair cells magically transform sound waves into electrical signals which travel to our brain to be processed. If the hair cells are damaged through medications or lots of loud noise over a long time, the circuits in the brain don't get normal signals, so the brain makes tinnitus instead. One of the most common causes of tinnitus is damage to the hair cells, but if there are problems anywhere along the auditory pathway, it can result in tinnitus. What are the treatments for tinnitus? Right, I will try to make this as simple as possible. I'm sure by the time you're watching me, you have already tried lots of different things, but there are two things you should definitely do before starting any treatment. The first is to have your ears examined by a health practitioner. They should make sure there isn't lots of impacted wax or an ear infection. Check your glands around your neck and behind your ears and listen to the arteries in your neck. The second thing is to get a formal hearing test done. This is because hearing loss is commonly associated with tinnitus and if you need a hearing aid, it may help the tinnitus go away. As always, the idea behind any treatment is to treat the cause. Next, I'm going to run through all the treatments available and the evidence behind them. Ototoxic medications. With your doctor, I'd have a careful look at all your medications and see if any drugs which are potentially ototoxic need to be stopped. Hearing aids. If hearing loss is the cause, I'd trial a hearing aid. Quit smoking. Research has shown that nicotine is associated with tinnitus and by giving up cigarettes, it may help tinnitus. 
sound therapies. Some people find listening to the radio at low volume between stations, so it's not tuned in, can distract from the tinnitus. Or just generally listening to music, a radio or a fan. You can get masking devices which are more expensive and are worn like hearing aids and generate low level white noise. These will not treat the cause of your tinnitus but may help alleviate the symptoms. What about dietary supplements? There's a plethora of ways you can spend your money because everyone has their solution for tinnitus, whether it's ginkgo biloba, zinc, melatonin, magnesium. Several systematic reviews on these dietary supplements have unanimously shown that these do not help tinnitus. Unfortunately, randomized trials have also failed to show any benefits for tinnitus with the use of antioxidant agents. What about restricting caffeine, salt and alcohol? For many years, these lifestyle treatments have been recommended for tinnitus, but there is no solid science supporting them. Drug treatments. Loads of different medications have been tried in the past for tinnitus, like beta histine, antidepressants, anticonvulsants, benzodiazepines. None of them have been shown to help in studies. Nutrition. This is where it gets quite interesting with idiopathic tinnitus, meaning tinnitus where we don't know what caused it. Going back in history, there was a Greek physician called Rufus of Ephesus who precisely described the anatomy of the ear. He was a big believer of taking a full nutritional assessment for all of his patients. Now, there is an interesting association between too much insulin in the body and tinnitus. Previous studies have shown that between 84 and 92% of tinnitus patients have too much insulin in their blood. You get too much insulin when there is lots of sugar in the blood, like type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome and other conditions. A very promising study in 2004 showed how it is possible to improve the symptoms of tinnitus just through diet alone. Going into the details of this is too much for the scope of this video, but what I would recommend is that you see your doctor for a full blood workup, especially looking at your blood sugars and potentially a glucose tolerance test to see if this explains the cause of your tinnitus. If so, it will be the start of a journey in improving your lifestyle through diet and exercise so you can potentially get rid of your tinnitus for good. Thanks for stopping by.